Hi, welcome back. My name is Bryce O'Connell. I'm a senior strategist and regional team lead at Crimson Education. And this is my class on Cracking the Common App, a deep dive into the application. Already we've covered an overview of the application, academics, a little bit about testing, extracurriculars, and the personal statement. And now we're going to put it all together and show how one of my favorite top students uh, managed to get through the process using all of those tips. Okay, so I'd like to share a little bit about one of my, one of my personal favorite students, but also just a really great example of, of how the Crimson process and, and working with a bunch of mentors can really change the direction and ultimately get, get such a great result at the end. So when I first met the student, there was no clear theme to the application. There certainly were no large outstanding achievements on the activity list either. Uh, and this particular student, he really just wanted to go to Princeton. That was it. It was kind of non-negotiable at that point. So, um, right, there, there was a lot of work to be done. Uh, in addition, there were, there were no test scores and just we weren't really working with much. So we basically had to start at the beginning. The, one of the very first things we did was start up his Common App put all the information in, it rolls over, and the earlier you start it, the, the easier it is to kind of visualize how it all should be coming together. So we created his Common App um, and got that ready to go. And then we started strategizing. So how do we uh, first pick a major? What should we even do? So we looked through his, his academics, we had a lot of conversations about what was interesting to him, and it was, it was very clear that it was going to be something science. He wanted to work for NASA, do something really amazing uh, with research and, and telescopes, I, I don't even know. There was just so much going on that he was interested in, but ultimately we realized uh, physics was going to be uh, the topic of choice. And what we really needed to do is make sure his academics reflected this interest. So we made sure to uh, register for a number of different advanced classes. I believe his senior year was more or less all APs. He took uh, a lot of science and math, of course, and really challenged himself by, by entering into Olympiads and, and, other, and science fairs. And this was really the best way for him to, to put together his interest and demonstrate that on the Common App. Not just in class, but outside of class, in competitive settings, um, and really taking the most rigorous course load possible. His school offered a lot of APs, and it was a really great way for him to challenge himself. But not only did he take a lot of challenging classes, but he did really well. He ended up in the uh, top 10 rank uh, of his class, and I believe his class was, was about 900 students large. So really impressive to, to place in the top 10 for, for, such a, for such a large school. So this student was doing a great job with academics. Everything was falling into place. Place, ranked well, great GPA, really rigorous classes. We knew we were targeting physics. We also then determined that he would need a really strong test score. So he took the ACT a couple of times, um, but ultimately ended up getting uh, a near perfect score. So the sub scores were all great. I believe we ended at a 35. Um, so really, really strong. Academically, testing wise, set up perfectly for Princeton or, you know, whatever other school that he would want to apply to. Very competitive profile. However, in applying to any top school, you need your extracurriculars to be just as compelling as your academic and testing sections. So when he first started working with us, there wasn't a lot. He definitely had a good foundation, but it was a little scattered. He was in um, a biology club. He was on the president's council did some volunteering and, and chess. So he had a few different things, but there wasn't really a clear direction for it. So that was a big part of our, of our early days working together. How can we add more to this profile so that he not only um, has some achievements to show, but that it clearly is directed towards physics. He got into science fairs, he was competing, um, he founded uh, another club related specifically to science. He also, through all of this and through putting his application together, got accepted to a very prestigious science research summer program. And then the following year, by 
us continuing to develop his profile and, and improve his competitiveness got into an even more prestigious summer program the following year. So all of these things together started really showing that he had what it took to, to be competitive, not just in class, but outside of class. But the best part was his capstone. This is a project that Crimson students work on that combines their academic interest with leadership, a little bit of community service, um, with the goal of having a lot of impact. So for this particular student, and what I like to see happen with some STEM students, is to have a balance point. So he had, once we started crafting his, his activities a little bit more, he had a lot of different points that spoke specifically to science. We didn't really need another science point on his profile. So with his capstone, we started to think about what else are you interested in? What else do you spend your time doing? And it turned out that <clears throat> he had previously struggled with some, some anxiety, um, maybe a little bit of, of depression. He changed schools in high school and that was, that was pretty hard. So he went through a, a tough time and he met with some professionals and through all of this, he started writing poetry and he found that that really helped him and he wanted to share that with other people. So he created this really great organization that um, not only exposed people to poetry, but then created these books of poetry to then share. He created one book that was shared with nursing homes during the pandemic to sort of cheer them up, you know, with everything that was going on. Um, he held workshops, he brought in professionals and speakers, and it became this really great organization with a lot of benefit. Not very STEM related, not really related to his major interest, but it was this great counterpoint. So he had this really heavy STEM research profile, along with this really cool humanities, interpersonal sort of organization that made a really big difference in a lot of people's lives. So that was um, just really cool to see come together. But through uh, working with his Crimson mentors, in working with me to make sure everything fit together, his activity list went from kind of scattered, not that impressive, to really impressive, very targeted, with great balance points. And it was, it was really exciting to see that come together. What I'd like to talk about next for this student is how he approached his personal statement. So we started working on it very early. He even requested to have an application mentor ahead of the regular time because he was just so eager to get started. And he was um, really excited. He's a writer, right? He had produced a lot of poetry, was very confident with his writing skills. He had really strong communication skills as well. So I had uh, very high standards for him. And I, I told him that from the beginning. This. I guess uh, ultimately in the end was a good thing, but it did result in a lot of drafts. So he produced in the end probably 20, 25 different drafts of his personal statement before we landed on the one. But those early drafts were just not personal enough. They were kind of convoluted. You can tell he was trying to write for the admissions officers. He wasn't writing for himself and he wasn't being true to to his own personality and his own, his own mind. So what we ended up doing was just scrapping everything. Forget the topic proposals, forget everything you've written already, um, and let's just talk. So we sat down, we had I think like a two to three hour meeting where we just, we just chatted. I wanted to get inside his head, I wanted to figure out um, what his interests were because he had this cool physics profile and it, he wanted to talk about originally some, some physics great minds and how he was like them and how he was inspired to study physics and it just wasn't coming together. It didn't feel honest enough. So in, in talking with him during this monster meeting that we had, um, I noticed in the background of his video, he had this really cool map. So it was just hanging right above his bed, uh, which is unusual. Um, well, I guess it's not too unusual to have a map, but I noticed that this map was, was not usual. Uh, it looked very old and I just couldn't figure out how that fit into everything. He had never talked about geography before. So in, um, in asking about the map, he said, oh, I've got this huge passion for history. Like I just read history books for fun. I think it's fascinating. Um, cartography also is, is a fascinating thing to me. And so I had him tell me about the map and he, he walked me through it, told me about uh, the history of it, the different historical events that took place along the map. And it was just really great to see him light up with this passion. And I did notice um, 
he was kind of telling the, the hero's journey, right? Like all the different struggles that took place on this map. And, and I thought it could be a cool idea to overlap his own story with the story of this map and really just share that he has this map hanging above his bed and it's a passion of his. So we, we kind of fused the two topics together and he wove them really beautifully using those strong communication skills. And after months of work and many topics thrown in the garbage, uh, we came up with a really compelling personal statement that got him into his top school. So that's just one really great example of how we put all of these different elements together and all of the tips and tricks on how to craft that really excellent common app um, and get some great results. But there's so much more and there's really uh, far too much to say in just this one class. This was about cracking the common app I think it's far from cracked. So if you'd like to work with us, get the team going, get the conversation going, and start working on your very own uh, common application, please click one of the links below and talk with one of our academic advisors. And again, my name is Bryce O'Connell. It's been great working with you. It's been great sharing this class with you on how to crack the common app, and I look forward to uh, working with you soon.